Howdy, everyone. We are live from our studio in the warehouse. My guest today is Lisa Monk, and she is co-owner? Co-owner. Co-owner co of Wolf Creek. And um, Wolf Creek is a fairly new company to us. Um, we Indeed. met you guys because of the Tampa Naturally Healthy Pets Experience Amazing. event. Yes. Uh, they decided to uh, be a vendor there, and I think you were a sponsor we as were well. A sponsor, Very and to be. and so we did an interview prior to the event, so that I could find out, you know, who you guys were and mm -hmm. what you were doing. And uh, your husband, yep, is Scott, a chef. chef Scott. Is a chef, and their uh, restaurant had some issues during. COVID and everybody had to shut down. And yeah. I think was Scott bored. <laughs> we, we, were, we were all bored and emotionally distraught and got our first pandemic pup and then had to get that pup a pup as, as the story goes. And then um, health issues uh, surfaced and we found the, the likes of you and, mm -hmm. and integrated vets that led us away from Appaquil is, is the short story. Wow. Okay. So Got dogs, yep. got Apoquel. Hmm. Does this sound familiar to anyone? Um, so, and you guys live in Florida, right? We're in Tampa, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's real. One, down one, there. one of those flea capitals, and it's hot and humid and moist. And uh, we talk about summer damp heat here, but it's the summer. I think in Florida, it's three out of four seasons. Indeed. <laughs> So Indeed. heat and humidity. So we get lots of gut issues, lots of skin issues. Um, and so, uh, you guys decided that you could help fix a lot of these issues that you were seeing yeah, with Whole Foods. With Whole Foods. Because Scott's a food person. He's he, a chef. His shocking. passion. He's a, I call him the culinary chemist. <laughs> and he's certified as a canine uh, nutrition specialist. And the rest is history. We, we keep, he keeps formulating new uh, superfood blends because parents need them. They ask us for them. And um, for us, it was just, immunity and allergy at first and stress and anxiety, but everything else has come from pet parent request and he's glad to do it. He loves it. Yeah. So prior to going on live, we were discussing uh, some things that are kind of in the works yeah. and um, other things that pet parents are asking for mm -hmm. and what kind of you know issues. So certainly we know that probably the top two complaints from particularly dog owners, but even with kitty cat owners, allergies and IBD. Mm -hmm. Well, it's no surprise that those are our top two complaints because they go together because Indeed. when we have so. poor gut health, then we have leaky gut, and then we have allergies. Uh, so they're always going to go hand in hand and you can't fix one without fixing the other. Not at all. So, uh, so that is, um, means that, so you guys have a lot of different formulations and I've got them sitting here in front of me. So I will, if you want to grab a couple, sure. we'll just kind of see how many we can get in our fingers here. So, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, these are all on our website, but it's called Wolf Creek, W O O F. And some of them are good for kitty cats as well as dogs. So this is a flea spray. There's a flea and tick feed through powder. Um, and the two that are in my hand here, well, there's a hip and joint and then a stress and anxiety, but the two that are in my hand are the gut and digestion support and the immunity and allergy support. So those are the ones that we want to talk about the most today because this is our allergy focus week. By the way, um, Lisa came uh, bearing gifts basically and said that for any orders for any Wolf Creek product from our website from now until midnight tonight, East Coast time, uh, a portion of the sales will be donated to Monkey's House. Absolutely. So uh, Monkey's House Senior Dog Hospice and Sanctuary, um, Michelle and Jeff Allen. So anybody who places an order will be able to know when the order was placed. So any orders placed from now until midnight that have a Wolf Creek product in them, they are going to send money to Monkey's House. Indeed. So. We wanted to do that because... As a reminder, our, our pups are not with us long enough as it is. So proactive um, and not reactive 
um, remedy support by a natural course with this amazing human <laughs> being is the way we will add healthy years. So, yeah, yeah. we're trying. We're trying to add healthy years. That's what we're um, for. So we want to talk about. So let's let's talk about gut support first. Um, so the gut and here you you hold that. Oh, Vanna White. You you Vanna White, and I'll talk about the ingredients that are in here. So um, it has. Uh, proprietary wolf and dog derived probiotic cultures, which she just told me they get from a source in Canada. So very nice, clean source for the probiotics, 870 million colony forming units per scoop. This is your little, your little bamboo scoop. And so, cute. so I love the packaging with the reusable tin and the reusable little bamboo scoop. Um, and then for refills, you can buy it in a less expensive pouch and dump your pouch back into the tin. Yes, um, and you all can take a vote because uh, we were discussing this earlier. Um, would you rather just purchase pouches or do you like having the tin, the refill tin? For Gwen and I both, we said, we really love this tin. And then I just saved my tin and that's how it's made. You're supposed to save your tin and then dump your refill pouches in there. When I have to get something out of a pouch, it, it, I make a mess and it, I can't, I don't ever seal it right. And then, yeah. it, you know, it's got moisture in there and it's sticky. And I, so anyway, I'm a huge fan of tins, but we'll let you guys vote as well because they're trying to make some decisions on, do we keep tins? Do we just go to the less the expensive tins. pouch? Everybody says, I like the tin. Okay. Yeah. Well, so we'll see what, uh, it's yeah, we don't want folks to put this clean ingredient superfood in a leaching plastic container. Right. Indeed. Right. And I mean, you could put it in a glass jar, but then you'd have to be careful to store it out of sunlight. Right. Um, so if you have a, an amber glass jar that would work with sure. a metal lid. Um, but with somebody says, I love the tin, but, uh, <laughs> you know, in a clear glass jar, anything that you put in a clear glass jar, you definitely want to store out of sunlight. So yeah. in a, in a reasonably cool place. So right. things have to go in my pantry, which doesn't have windows. If I have them, like all the herbs that I picked from my garden fresh and I put them in the dehydrator to dry them, they're in glass jars in my pantry. Right. right, right. So, okay. Um, so the next thing in the, uh, gut health besides the, um, uh, the gut blend besides the probiotic cultures is a functional mushroom blend. And this one has chaga and shiitake, which everybody who follows me knows that I use a lot of shiitake mushrooms in my recipes because they're easy to get and they're so good for gut health. So amazing. So, they, and then chaga things. is amazing as well. And chaga usually comes out of Canada also. Um, so organic superfoods, regenerative antioxidants. So they use noni fruit, which I have never eaten. I don't even know what it looks like. Well, I know what it looks like. It's like this pear shaped fruit with like dimples, like a strawberry. And it's very uh, blue cheese aromatic. So dogs really? love it. Really? So that's helpful. And the pup loves it, right? But it's also it an antioxidant. Super antioxidant. So I know a lot of people talk about like drinking the nani nani juice, noni juice, whatever it is. I personally never have, but yeah, I I, I don't. The chef, I don't think the I've ever. Even, yeah, I don't even think I've ever seen it. But uh, alfalfa, alfalfa, which also works as a prebiotic and an antioxidant, and pumpkin seed, which organic is organic pumpkin, yep. which is um, antiparasitic and an ultra balancing fiber. So really, really pivotal. Yep. Um, so that's all for digestive function. Um, so that's what we have in the gut and digestion. And support. we love it for the balancing. Even if it's a proactive regimen, that leaky gut, that, that inflammation and healthy microbiome, we need to keep that balanced for, yes, immunity and allergy, but also the gut-brain axis and leads to stress and anxiety. IBD, gut is yes, everything. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is everything. So so we start there. But if you have an allergy pet, then the next thing you want to do, um, so this is the immunity and allergy support. So again, it comes in the little tin or the refill pouches with this cute, I love this little scoop. It's so cute. I want to hang it on my neck. <laughs> it's so <laughs> cute. cute. It's adorable. All right. So mm -hmm. this one is to bolster and repair the immune system via the gut, kidney, and liver. 
endocrine and circulatory systems, reducing or eliminating autoimmune and allergic reactions such as raw skin, hot spots, hives, ear infections, itching and shedding issues, coughing, sneezing, tear stains, all those things that go along with allergies. Um, so this one has kelp, which reduces inflammation and itching. Um, 70% of the immune system is in the gut. We already know that. And kelp contributes to a strong immune response and defends against negative stomach bacteria. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, New Zealand green lip mussels. We all know that we are big fans of green lip mussels. They're a rich source of vitamin C and E, antioxidant. ETA omega-3, yes. which is sort of a tetra Right, the third omega. Of, yeah, mm -hmm. which we, it's only found in the green lip mussels. So it's really cool. Um, Amazing. And also has vital minerals, some of the, the trace minerals that we don't get very often and sometimes have a hard time getting uh, up to the levels where they need to be. Copper, zinc, and selenium. And I think that uh, if we did hair analysis on hundreds of animals, we would find that many, particularly on homemade diets, are deficient in zinc and selenium. Uh, it's pretty common because um, those are, it can be hard to get those levels up to where we need them to be without adding a, a, a supplement source. Uh, so functional mushroom blend for this one is reishi, turkey tail, maitake, and shiitake. So we kind of got love, all yeah. those medicinal love the mushrooms. Tail. See, and I'm a huge fan of reishi because mm. it's a natural antihistamine. And mellowing. And mellowing, right? Yes. Uh, again, we've got, let's see, the mushroom blend supports immune system, digestive and liver function, regulates histamine response. The nani fruit, powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And then colostrum. Bovine colostrum, super helpful. Yep. Bovine colostrum. So it contains immune globulins, uh, but it also contains proline rich polypeptides, PRPs, um, and it relieves allergy and helps uh, balance out the immune system. And really helpful with like autoimmune disease, which allergies technically are an autoimmune disease. It's the body reacting negatively. Um, to the many triggers. To the many triggers. So we know that when you have an animal with allergies, and let's see, both of those can be taken by dogs and cats, correct? This is canine derived pre and probiotic. The probiotic so in no. there is canine. Okay. Um, but this. The, the allergy is for the both. Allergy. Okay. So we know that when you have an allergy pet, one of the things you have to do is you kind of have to, so the first thing you have to do if they're eating kibble or they're eating something that we think is contributing to that allergic response, then we've got to change the diet. Agreed. So usually we're going to want to go to a novel protein. You want to get away from anything synthetic. So all those synthetic vitamins and minerals that you see on the ingredient list on whatever it is that you're feeding if you can't pronounce some of the words or they sound chemically, then they are. And so mm -hmm. you're getting these synthetic vitamins and minerals. And that's one of the things that the body likes to react to because it's like, I didn't make that. I don't know what that is. It doesn't, it's not bioavailable naturally. So. Right. So, so we want to get away from that. So that's one of the first things you need to do. And then if you already have your animal on, a bunch of different things. And I can tell you that when I had my practice, the holistic vet first, and I, you know, I was, I was thinking about this in the middle of the night because I was having insomnia last night. And I was thinking, you know, a lot of holistic vets burn out mm -hmm. really early. Um, and the reason Part of the reason I think mm -hmm. is one that w holistic veterinarians are really bad at valuing themselves and charging enough to actually cover their expenses. So they're always struggling to pay the bills. So that's one thing. But two, holistic vets are usually the last resort. It's like they've been to the traditional vet, like your dogs were on Apoquel. And so it's like, wow, I've tried all this stuff that they're telling me to do and it's not working. It's right. getting worse. My animal's sick. The gut health is bad. Like now we went from itching and scratching to vomiting and diarrhea. We don't have any hair that, you know, they feel bad. They look bad. And so for holistic veterinarians, so mm. often we're like the 10th doctor in a row and things have been going 
badly for so long and the people come in and they're so frustrated and they kind of look at us like, oh my God, this is just one more person that's going to take my money and not be able to solve things. Yeah. What do I believe? Who do I believe? Yeah. And so it, it can get really, really frustrating for the doctor as well as the client. But I used to have clients literally would come in with these huge shopping bags, mm -hmm. like four or five huge shopping bags full of all the supplements, like the supplement graveyard of all the different things that they've tried. And unfortunately yeah. for many of them, they've tried a hundred supplements, but they still haven't changed the diet or they they're, you know, they went from one chicken based food to another chicken based food or one sure. beef based food to another beef based food. Um, and so a lot of times I, I, I look at that as sort of, a la I talk about this in one of my talks, a lateral move with the food. It's like, I didn't change everything. I just changed a little bit. And those supplements are pivotal, but if they're spending their energy fighting the preservatives and binders and glyphosates in the highly processed foods, you're not going to see the results. Right. You want a clean start. So your protocol, second on the protocol is upgrade the diet. Yep. If yep. you can and, and, and you know, we have a saying that you cannot out supplement a bad diet. Like if, if your animal is right. eating something that is just not agreeing with their gut, it's not agreeing with their body. Yeah. I don't care. You could, every supplement in this warehouse, you could throw at them and it's not going to solve yeah. the issue. There's a step ladder that you have there to is. follow. So with that said, I love these products because these are whole food, very clean, very well sourced products. and what our chef did was basically come up with things that in his research he knows can help. However, maybe you have an animal who has a sensitivity to one of those ingredients and you don't know it yet. You can start with individual ingredients. So I right. wanted to talk about these products today, but I also Absolutely. wanted to say, so we broke down the, um, allergy and immunity. So it has bovine colostrum in it. Well, you could just get straight bovine colostrum and try that for a week added to your new novel protein diet. Mm -hmm. So that might be rabbit. It might be pork. So with my, my first really bad allergy dog that I adopted, I made a pork diet mm -hmm. as her first homemade diet because pork was easy to find rabbit was not easy to find and was expensive. And she, she came a long way with her rabbit diet, but I just couldn't get, or with her pork diet, but I just couldn't get over the hump. Sure. So I found a good source of rabbit, switched her over to rabbit. And that was enough to get us to the next level while we were healing her gut and doing other things. Sure. And this goes back a lot of years. Um, so you could do straight colostrum. Like once you have the diet going in the direction you want it to, you could do a straight colostrum. You could do a straight reishi mushroom. Remember, that's nature's antihistamine. You could do a straight kelp. This is Dr. Connor Brady's Irish kelp, which we really like. You could do straight greenlit mussels. So these are freeze-dried greenlit mussels. So you could do that by itself, which, by the way, those are really great for arthritis and joints as well. Or if you wanted to try a mushroom blend with two different options, there's five defenders mushroom powder, which has five different mushrooms, reishi, maitake, shiitake, chaga, and turkey tail, or the paws mighty mushroom. My dogs love these. They're a, they're a little square treat. Um, they think it's awesome. And that one has chaga, maitake, reishi, shiitake, and turkey tail. Uh, but this one does have chicken and catfish in it. Uh, to make the little chewable cubes. So if you have a pet who might have a chicken allergy, you might want to go with something like the five defenders powder also comes in a capsule. So you can get all these things together in one well-studied and well-researched supplement, or you could say, you know what, my animal is so sensitive. I'm going to break this down. I'm going to add something. So you can track it. You can elimination diets and you yep. tried everything. Yeah. Yep. One at a time. Yep. So it really yep. comes down to being able to really back off. And so, uh, my, one of my, my head receptionist for quite a few years had a little dog that developed pretty significant IBD mm. later in life, actually. Um, 
And so I said, well, we've got to get her on a novel protein diet. And she was so funny because she went to an internal medicine specialist with this dog because it was just not going well. And I said, well, you've, you're going to have to feed this dog rabbit. I'm sorry. You're going to have to spend the money. You're going to have to source the rabbit. And it's an investment. <laughs> it's a huge investment. But it was a small dog, luckily. And so, and she, uh, the dog didn't like and didn't tolerate mm. raw. So she had to cook the rabbit, which deboning rabbit is just no fun. Let me Scott just loves it. Oh my loves that. gosh. Little teeny tiny bones. I did that for Myra for a long time. Mm. Um, but then I discovered that if you run everything through the blender, you basically grind up the bone after it's cooked. So <laughs> we started <laughs> blenderizing it. Um, but her dog was on a cooked rabbit. And it had one, a second ingredient. I think it was rabbit and butternut squash mm. for six months. It was not balanced. It was not even close to balanced, but that's what it took for us to get her gut healed enough yeah. that then we could start adding in the things that we needed to balance it. So I know everybody gets really scared with the, oh my gosh, you know, it's, it's not balanced. Complete. It's, it's because you get this drilled into your head, complete and balanced every meal, every meal. And believe me, folks, dogs take a long time to fall apart. <laughs> a long time to fall. They do. <laughs> um, so, you know, certainly we recommend getting it as close to balanced as you can, but I have had, I had another little dachshund that was on a white fish diet mm -hmm. with only like two other things. It was so far from balanced. And the dog was on that for a couple of years. Wow. And was still racing around like crazy. And it was the only thing that kept its guts under control. So don't get too worried if you've got a 30 day window or a 45 day window where it's like, oh my gosh, I can't, I, you know, I got to back down to just one or two ingredients. Yeah. Because it can take a while adding things one at a time. And if you're adding something new, add it in small amounts. Oh yeah. Transition. And don't make huge batches. So, you know, Myra was on her pork recipe for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see if she would tolerate rabbit. I made a little bit of rabbit separately and I gave her a little bit of that each day for a few days to make sure that wasn't going to set her off. Cause believe it or not, some dogs are allergic to rabbit. It's like my novel protein for everything. And it's a good go to duck too, but yeah. Yep. But, but it doesn't know. work for all of them. Um, yeah, I had another allergy guy that I brought in and duck was, was his, his saving grace. Good. And so it's cooling. Yep. So. Um, and I've had pork work really, really well. We some. love pork. Uh, the super B vitamin is tremendous for so many other aspects. Yep. So, so, so all good stuff, but you know, take heart folks. Allergies yeah. are manageable. There are some animals uh, it, you know, when I first started before I got into holistic medicine, um, and if you go to a dermatology lecture at any veterinary conference, they will say allergies are not curable. The goal is to manage allergies. Well, yes and no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a genetic component for some sure. animals. Um, but what I found with holistic practice, changing the diet, adding in gut health support, healing the gut. Um, I would say that 90% of them became so manageable that it was a non-issue. It, it really can be overcome. Uh, like you said, autoimmune, leaky gut, these things, the health dog bowl, metaphorically, is real. And the more control of preservatives and glyphosates, Roundup, and the preventatives for flea and tick, and then upgrading for the positive, clean ingredients, watching your labels, all of that, yeah. they might not be allergies. It, it just might be a chronic discomfort issue internally. And balance is key. And variety, right? Yes. So... And, you know, our, our new little guy, just, just, you know, I'll tell on myself, hmm. our new little guy was digging at himself, scratching, oh. licking, chewing the other night. And I just wanted to wring his little neck because he was just keeping us awake and just wouldn't stop licking and chewing and licking. And I'm like, oh my God, do you have a flea? What is your problem? Yeah, no, he was blowing out an anal gland. <laughs> Which the life of which that. became which became very apparent the next day when I picked him up and went, "What is your problem? Let me look you over." And I went, "Oh, 
that's what you were yes. chewing on. Okay, that's different. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we think they're having an allergy attack and maybe not. Maybe they're having something a little more sinister, but he's he's fine now. We and you have the, the luxury of knowing. <laughs> oh, it was obvious. <laughs> you, well, yeah. Once obvious. I picked him up and looked at all his of the dog. And actually what I did, I picked him up and I got my flea comb and I was combing him. Mm-hmm just to make sure there wasn't a rogue flea that was yeah, causing him to farm. be crazy. And when I got to the back end, then I, he's got a little nubby tail and I went, oh dear. <laughs> That's what you're chewing on. So yeah, sometimes we get fooled and sometimes there's something else underlying the issue. So, But knowledge is power and you, knowledge is you power. all Don't be watching fooled. And, and being with Dr. Judy, you're in such great hands. Like you've, I applaud everyone who has found Dr. Judy. We we know for our family, it's been amazing to, to be empowered with this information and, and knowledge. We're advocates for our dog children, you know. Well, and we love partnering up with people who are making good products that Thank are you. whole food ingredients. And that's kind of our shtick as well. Thank you. So I hate to uh, talk and run, but I have to take a kitty cat to the veterinarian, which means I've got to run from here, go stuff a cat into a box. This cat is not the stuffable (laughs) one. Uh, And get him some lab work. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My (laughs) husband will not put this one in a box by himself. He's like, no, you got to come put this one in the box. So I got to go put a cat in a box. Everybody have a wonderful day. Uh, I don't know what tomorrow's topic is, but it's something on allergies. It's the week. (laughs) Thanks, Lisa. Thank you.